See, I, I asked you in the very first meeting about going to school. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. Tell me about that again. Um, when you were about how old the government man came to your house? Oh, I guess I was almost getting to be eight years old. And uh, he came one afternoon and I saw him talking to my father. And I know there was something about me because I kept looking over there, you know. And finally when he left, my father said, you have to go to school. That man said that you have to be in school. You're too old to be outside, mm. you know, just playing around. <laughs> Darn. <huh? laughs> so they, then they sent me. My my brother had already gone to school a year. Uh, no, he was there, I think, two years already. My older brother lives here. So, so my father was working. He never, he couldn't take a day off. And so he told my brother to take me with him and, uh, you know, take me to school. And my brother said, all right. He never said no, and he was always so faithful. Mm -hmm. Then we, he took me to school. I didn't know where the school was. I never went there, see. He took me, and we were just playing out in the desert. <laughs> we played in the desert all day long. Oh. And then by the time, I guess it was time to go home, then he brought me home with it. And my mother asked him, said, did you go to school? And he didn't want to say anything, you know. And finally, my dad asked him, he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, he didn't take me to school at yeah. all. So finally, there was a man named uh, Ramon Manuel here in Palm Springs, and my my mother talked to him and said you should take her and register because he talked uh, yeah. English, you know. He said all right, so he took me up and he registered me there. What was the school? Uh, um, what Francis. Is it? Yeah, Francis uh, Stevens School. Yeah. Right. And we didn't go in that big building, the Francis, the main building. There was a little building way in the corner there. That's where we were, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where we started. After you got into fourth or fifth grade, then you went to the, the other oh, big the building. Oh, the Indian? Are you saying the Indian children were separated from the white children? Yeah, well, there were uh, there was some Italians and oh. blacks and mm -hmm. Mexicans and Indians in that corner until they got to a certain grade, and they, they had to go to that because there was no other grade they should go. Hmm. And that's where it started. Here. And it didn't bother me, because well, you know, I didn't know anything about it. Right. It really yeah, didn't matter. Not. When, <laughs> when you don't know that you're being dealt with an injustice, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to matter. So anyway, oh. but uh, afterwards, and I really never did find out, because when we went to the other grade, upper grade, I met all these other uh, uh, girls and boys from here, like, uh, uh, Mrs. Kiley was one of the students there, mm -hmm. and all these other, and they were uh, rich children, you know, and but they were real good, and they never pushed us away, or we all became friends oh, and everything true. else, and mm -hmm. there was never anything that said that we shouldn't be there and everything mm -hmm. else. I, I never was. That's why I never, finally, when I went to high school, that was the first time I'd ever really hit, hit me, you know, that people were being separated or segregated. Mm -hmm. And because uh, we lived on the reservation, and then the bus came in the middle of town. We had to catch the bus there. Going to high school, I had to go to high school to Banning, see, because there was no high school oh. in Palm Springs. So you were being busted. In the yeah, <laughs> every day. And then I went yeah. one morning. We left. I left, and there was a restaurant right next door to where our house was, right mm -hmm. on the on the north side. And I looked at that window, and it says, uh, "To cater to whites only." Mm -hmm. and I I, I came back again. I went. I went to the restroom. I think I was the first fighter for that. Mm. I told that man. I said, you know, you better take that sign off off there. If you want to put that sign off, you better go on the other side of the street, Palm Canyon. Mm. And then you can put your sign. But I said, you're right on the Indian reservation. <laughs> oh, and for you. yeah. So then I went to school. I came back again. That sign was gone. Ooh. <laughs> That's smart man. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have gone to my dad too. Oh, you know. Yeah. But uh, the sign was gone. Hmm. That was in 1936. Yeah. Mm -hmm. think about but that. that's that's what happened. Then I went to school uh, every day mm -hmm. up to. Well, first of all, I wasn't going. I wasn't supposed to go to school, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, my my dad said we don't have any money for you to go to school. We don't have anything like that. Oh, I said, I'll manage. Mm -hmm. So uh, they used to have restaurants. There was one here, and there was another rest. I used to go over there and work. Peel uh, potatoes and they make men money to go to school. Extra you really money. Wanted to go to school. Yeah, right? and I made uh, I had odd jobs, mm -hmm. wash dishes, and so I got spending money. So I went to school. Right. And you're, are you talking about going finishing high school? Yes. And, uh, 
so I so went so I went on and so uh, I finished I was I was determined to finish yeah. high school. No matter how old I was I was gonna yeah. finish the school. <laughs> and I did. Yeah, because yeah, it's good to know are you living in that world you needed to know it to mm -hmm. Um, been speaking of which, you told me that you started out as a child not speaking any English whatsoever, right? When you were put into mm -hmm. that school, you were, mm -hmm. you said, what, put in the back of the room? Yeah, and yeah, just sat there mm -hmm. because uh, the, the teacher didn't know what to do with me. Mm -hmm. She didn't understand me. I didn't understand her, so that's why she just put me back there. But uh, the, real, uh, the one thing that I kind of uh, felt bad about, they didn't give me a book or a paper or nothing to look at. I just sat there mm -hmm. doing nothing. But mm -hmm. so at some point, mm -hmm. it all suddenly you were speaking English. I yeah, guess that's I how kids are. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's strange that they didn't. What did they think you're going to do for mm -hmm. so many hours? <laughs> <laughs> and then afterwards, they never really taught me the basics, like ABCs and mm -hmm. uh, printing your name and nothing was ever. Mm -hmm. So when I got to high school, I had to learn all that all over, you know, because everything was so hard. Well, I wonder then, what made you so determined to keep at it? It was so hard for I you. Know, I don't know. <laughs> you were just stubborn and got to yeah, do it, huh? Yeah. You wanted it for yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. well, then, uh, then after that, by that time, they had built this Palm Springs High School. Mm -hmm. And it, wasn't, it was just half finished when we came back. They said we could go to school there now, so we came here. And my nephew was the first Indian boy that graduated from high school here in Palm Springs. And I was the second, uh, um, uh, the first Indian girl to graduate from Springs High School. Do they ever ask you to come back and speak? No, gosh, nothing. Yeah. They never I have. I wonder if they know that. I bet they don't even realize. I was your mother's marriage arranged? Uh -huh. okay. So she didn't know your dad until, um, or until at what point? How was that done? Until till she was taken over there from, uh, and at night too, you know, they yeah. took her in, in the wagon, of course. Okay, she was coming from what place? From Torres Martinez. Okay, up so. Up to Los Coyotes. All right, so your mother, her mother-in-law and your parents, or her mother-in-law and your mother, your grandmother got together and taught, how was that arranged? The, the, the grandparents did that. Oh, the grandparents uh -huh. did, okay. And so when they decided that they wanted your mother as their son's bride. And I, that's what I always think about. I should have asked, how did they know? Because that's so far away, you know. And my dad was over there and my, my father said, I never thought about getting married. He said, I just want, because most of my uncles were all bachelors. Oh, they really? never married. Yeah. And my, I guess my dad was going to do the same thing. But mm -hmm. here they had arranged that for him. <laughs> and he said, I didn't know anything about it. Here they brought my mother. How old was she? She was just... Uh, 13, a little over 13 and a half. So that's why she just lived over there for two years before they got married mm -hmm. and had begun the married life. Mm -hmm. So they were, she was really essentially a little girl mm -hmm. coming into a strange place in mm -hmm. the middle of the night. Did she ever talk to you about how she felt about that? Uh, yeah, I asked her one time. She said, well, she said, I was afraid because I, I was with strange people. And uh, she said, if I had known which way I came, you know, I would have run away. She said, but I didn't know where it was dark. I didn't know which way I came, so I didn't want to go. Well, did, I wonder if her mother prepared her for that, that someday you're going to go live in another place. I don't know. I never knew about yeah. that. You, you so. kind of think they would, but then again, the young girls probably would run away before that if they knew they were going to yeah. be taken away. But so when she got there, I imagine that her then her mother-in-law really became her mother. Yeah, uh -huh. and she, she did, trained her pro yeah. properly over there. Uh -huh. And how did she feel about her mother-in-law? Oh, she, she liked it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there were other girls, I imagine, that maybe. Yeah, and that, not only that, but uh, my my older uncle, my father's older brother. Mm -hmm. Those were the two, there was five boys, but those were only two that ever got married, oh. see. So the oldest one had bought a bride from uh, uh, either from uh, Rincon or La Jolla, oh. see. So she was in oh, the... she was she really was, a Yeah, uh -huh. oh. so her and my mother became good friends okay. because they were both from someplace yeah. else, you know. So they... I wonder how the other children treated them, because since there were 13 or other young women, I should say, were. I think they were all right. Really nice uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, it just seems like it's, there's so much potential there to, to really tease a stranger coming in. And young girls of that age, you know, they're not mature. I just, it yeah. probably was hard for a little while, maybe. Huh? Mm -hmm. But they had, they had friends, and, they, and that's the way it was. They accepted that, I guess. Yeah. 
And then after they were there, after my mother was there two years, and then they, they got married by the church, and then, then started the family. And they've mm -hmm. stayed married all their lives, didn't Yes, they? until she passed away. Yeah, worked out. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes it seems like those arranged marriages work surprisingly well. Mm -hmm. um, why not? You get to know somebody and become friends. And I used to listen to my dad when he, see he went to school when he was 20 years old. Mm -hmm. Of course he wanted to learn uh, the, uh, the, the, what the book was saying, mm -hmm. what people were saying, you know. And then after that he worked with some family, he went to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. He said that, I remember, he said the coaches were still running then, you know. Oh. Uh -huh. oh. And I think it was in uh, 1898 or something like that, 1898. Yeah. No, the, in, in town, in oh. Los Angeles. Ah. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Such yeah. a different time. Yeah. Because yeah. he knew all about where, uh, what is the name of that, uh, Hill Street was, mm -hmm. and all that Broadway for long, for oh, long. So he traveled a little yeah. bit before he got married, didn't he? <laughs> That's oh, why he didn't want to get married. Yeah. <laughs> Did he do much traveling after he was married? Was he no, much he in? worked all yeah. the time. He knew that was going to happen, yeah. didn't he? Oh, well. Yeah. But after uh, my mother passed away, he did. Because he? he could talk English, he could uh -huh. talk Spanish. Yeah. He used to teach the Mexicans how to talk correct Spanish. Well, we used to get in swimming, that one. And after that, we'd come out and we'd go in that hot water right there. And uh, that place, and nobody wouldn't tell you about it, but I'm going to tell you right now. That was connected from here, clear down to Salton Sea almost. Mm -hmm. We used to have water over there like that. And they called El El. You know, there was a woman was there. You know, yeah. And you can see the, come out sometimes, long hair look like it, it like water lilies, whatever they call them, or mm -hmm. seed, like something, yeah. The long stringy yeah, stringy that's the way it looks. Things. And they used to say that. That's not just from the water, that's from that woman. Ooh, that and that was the Raison girl. That was the Raison girl, the young girl. She went in that water. She used to be mother and father. They used to told them they used to drink that water, you know. Mm -hmm. And they told them, go ahead and get some water. And she said, no, I don't, I'm not going to do that. If I go, you won't see me anymore, told his mother and father. Oh, she just talking like that. And finally she went that afternoon. Well, they, I think they used them oils, you know, get the water. Mm -hmm. And she put them to them and then she went in that water and nobody never did at home. So he just happened. got lost, looked like it. But they know that she was there. And that was water connected up to this hot spring water over here. And so it was. Wait, oh, excuse me, the story you're talking about, you say happened down there. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then that's, is it seeing that, the, whatever that long string up here, it's, that's her, she's still in there, and you can see it even up here. Yeah. Okay, I see. And uh, it's one guy, he talked to that uh, Mr. Chino, he said, You go in that water from here, and I'll meet you in half a way. There was another guy, his name's Anashu. Uh, What's the last name? Boy, was that? Uh, I forgot his last name now. Mm -hmm. Armico. His father was that Pablo Armico, mm -hmm. not Pablo Juan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, he's the one went in that water. And he said he went about oh maybe ten, fifteen yards, and after that there was no water. He don't know where the water come from, and he just walked, come out over here in Palm Springs. And he met that Chino old man over here. So he's talking about diving in. Yeah. And going mm -hmm. under and coming up. You know, I heard that story in Potencio about the, that everything, the water's up through here, through the, that, you know, right down by San Jacinto, through Chino Canyon, are yeah. all connected to Takwish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Must be the same sort of idea. Yeah, just like a tunnel, he said. Yeah, that's what yeah. Chino said. I remember. Uh, because I was not in there, because I don't want to tell you how good inside. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I'd want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that w hot water come from somewhere, from Volcano or somewhere, mm -hmm. so I think that's why it come out like that. I I heard about that long time, but I don't like to scare anybody like that, you know. And some of these days, they'll blow out. Who knows? Nobody knows, but they just say that. <laughs> Big buildings on top of it now. Why won't they be surprised? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the kind of story they used to tell me about it. And, 
And my mother well, should live. Where did the water run? They got a yeah. I don't know. It isn't in the building at all. I guess. Well, I think if there's a pool in there that oh, you can go in, and it's tight. Be. But I don't know. It seems like it's all, it's. Tell me what it's about, though. <laughs> <laughs> so I know. Uh, I don't want to sing. I just sing from here and there. Right. You know? okay. Okay. That's why I said, every place I'm going to go, if somebody asks me, I'm going to sing that first song, just like your name. And I, but I said, well, you met them. That's why I said, well, you met them. Anything you like to, we know something, and we follow that one. And uh, when he asked me, if I passed away some of these things, what are you going to do? I said, Matt, I'm going to go and tell you why you get too tall. And he was a tall guy. I said, mm, maybe. He used to tease him. How's the weather up there, Matt? <laughs> oh, he said, on these days you're going to get <laughs> tease him like that, you know. That, so you're going to sing about a song about why he got, how he got too tall? <laughs> no, I would just, you would just make know. fun of him all the time, you know. But he's a nice guy. Sing a bird song. Yeah. Maybe. Well, that's a bird song. Well, that, that's oh, yeah. That's why, but he followed his name. What other songs do you sing besides the first Why don't you sing that one where he went hunting? Remember, you have it on that other tape? Oh, that, uh... The hunter? Oh, that'd be nice, yeah. Oh. The hunter's not good. We don't play that one too much, we'll just sing it. Okay, go ahead. Can you live on that? Can you live on that? Can you live on that? And the child I know never be one egg, and there will 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 be one egg, and when there will no book number one egg, and the child I know went away one egg, and look many no. Me and Nami went, I see the cross to the mountain. The well name the Pentewa no. Nami went, that means cross to the men in I was standing this way, but I turned this way. But now I'm in a, and listen to it, something noise. You know, if you don't hear nothing, you turn this way. And how you know? I mean, I'm tired. The hunter. And the wound of it, and now I'm, the, I'm tired, you know. That's what, the, and that deer looked like it's listened to you someplace, mm -hmm. and he'll jump on. Maybe it's, that's the end of it for him, you know. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the one who sing. If anybody, person, he knows something like that, you ask him what he'll tell you. Maybe Catherine, she don't know, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. But that's the way we sing. And, and early in the morning we get up and think about where we're going to go. I'm going to go tomorrow and this, this guy's going to go with me. And I wake up and get some kind of something to eat and I'm ready and he comes around. You had about anything, dream, bad dream, or something like that? No, I think I never dreamed nothing bad. You know. Well, let's go. We'll go. And that's why they tell me about it. Don't think about anything bad things to yourself, you know. If something happened, turn around and come back. Don't go so far. That's it. 
you know, but sometimes, oh, I can make it. That, that's something not right. A lot of things about it, people hunting or any place they go to get there. And they don't think about, well, I'm going to stay overnight here, you know. They don't go to the first place. They sleep in the woods somewhere and they get up and go on the next morning. And when they come back, well, I went by over here the other day, but I hate to bother you people. No, why don't you come and stay with us? And where'd you stay? I sleep in the trailer over there. And they say, well, don't do that next time you come and stay over here. Because when he stopped there, they're asking questions, where are you going? What's up there? What do you want to go for? You need help to go? No, he said, I'm going my, with my own power. I want to get there. And he knows going to be there. So that's, that's the way we figured every, every place would go. You know, just, uh, well, I think I better not go. You're putting your time up. Maybe tomorrow I go. Maybe, I don't know. You know? And if you go, something's going to happen to you then. So that, that's why you said, well, I'm going to go. I might as well go. Don't wait for nobody. You're going to go. You're going to make it. Yeah. That's just the way the singing song, everything like that. So when you're singing the song, you're thinking about what it is you're going to do, and going that way or going the other way, and how you're going to get there. So you're sort of saying that to yourself. The song. Oh yeah. I don't know. Like, uh, like if you're lost or you've got the, no way to get there, how you going to expect to be nighttime or daytime or hungry or something like that? We got that song for that too. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I ran away from school one time from Yuma. Oh, you were sent to Indian school? Were you? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't want to come home, but the other guy, he said, let's go back. I said, how do we want to go back? Long wish. He said, well, well, we can make it walk. I said, okay. And we come. Walk almost a week. How old were you? Yeah. How old were you when you did this? I think I was, what, uh, 13, 14 oh, years old. Something like that. Okay. And that awesome. guy was the same, you know. Mm -hmm. So you walked a week. Yeah. We eat the watermelons, we find the watermelons in the road and something like that. We eat and come, we made it. When I come home and my mother, she got up and she was dancing. You know, I was thinking about what she was going to say now. I think she was going to blow them out or something like that. No, she was singing. He said, she said, I'm going to sing this song because you, you feel better when you're walking home. I said, yeah, a couple of days anyway. We're hungry, no water, but we made it. I said, yeah, but you know what? Because I know you was coming home. I said, well, it's all right, but I made it, that's it. And she sang this song. Sonikati I can't sing at all. Mm -hmm. I, it's crying I, and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. So it made you feel better when she sang that song, or was it? It was about you. Oh yeah, I felt better, you know, because I was home then. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good place, I think, to end. <laughs> no, it's it's a good memory, and I appreciate you sharing it. With, um, you, I love the singing. No one's ever really sat down and told me what the songs were about. Yeah, we've got a lot of songs, you know, different for little kids and old people like that. Mm -hmm. But that, I said, the art. I told them to go. And, uh, well, he said, if they ask me questions, I won't be tell all the story from my mother and the father. I might be crying. <laughs> it's hard. He said because they come into the uh, Said stories. Mm -hmm. I won't take it, he said. And his father was a rich man, that guy. You know, they build a fire, a big fire, there's mesquite wood, you know, it's hot ones. He stand that fire. He got that cold and he throw it all over his shoulders, bathing in it. And the people don't believe that I seen that myself. And I walked away. And he told me, some of these days you might be doing that. 
He said, so watch me. And I said, oh, I think you could look like you're crazy when you're doing it. That my heart. That was Art Quintana, you said? Yeah, his father. His, his, his father. father. What yeah. was his name? Louis. Louis Quintana. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he's, uh, he's just like, uh, you know, we call this tacos. He, he can he can see that or he can look like he knows what times it's going to come up. He tell you ahead of time. And there was another guy's name, Ambrosio Castillo. I don't know if you guys got picture over here. He was a little short guy. He got he always wear a band handkerchief over his head. I seen it somewhere in some side somewhere. I think that somebody got it way up there. Father um, was a shaman, or he, he did, um, that's my word for it, I don't know if it's your word for it, did he, he did special things at ceremonies, um, uh, you, you'd said that sometimes he could take the form of a bear. Uh, a witch man. Mm -hmm. Well, my father here was a great man of the Latin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they turned into bear. And uh, when they like Did this, you call it like a witch man, is that what you said? Yeah. And that's what, See, I'm trying to find a word that you and I are understanding. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. He can go and turn into the bear. Mm -hmm. And you think about it, you wouldn't believe it. Like they ask me a lot of times, and they tell, look like somebody don't believe me about it, but they don't know. That's right. And my father was like that, and uh, he told this, you know, this one boy, he wanted to go at one time. And he told him, he said, you ought to get somebody to go with you. He said, somebody might be waiting for you, because he knew it already. No, he said, I'm going to go, I got my gun. Well, that time they hadn't come, but I mean, uh, bone and arrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, no, but you have to have somebody with you. And I said, I'll be back. So he left. He walked up in the mountains and was looking around, and he see two bear tracks over there. He looked at it and he stopped. He said, I think that's the one he was telling me about. It. But they're not bears. I, I'm going to kill them if I catch you close enough. And he was saying that to himself. Mm -hmm. And then when he turned around, there was a walking through him, walking right back on him. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to kill you both of them. He said, I got my bone arrow. And he said, no. And they walked right there to, to tear him up, killed him right there. Mm -hmm. And then they, they left him right there. No, they, they hang its guts and everything, you know, by the tree or something like that, or the rock. And uh, this man, it was related to this boy, and he was another guy. He think about it already, and he was getting later and later, and he said, you know what? He said, you boys ought to go check on that boy. Must be there was big guys already. They said, no. He said he was going to come back. We're much going to wait for him till he get over here. He said, no, something happened to him. And finally they left him. They went up in the mountains. It was kind of early yet. And they run into that place where they're wrestling that bears, I think. And they look around and they see that everything was hanging over there. Mm -hmm. They killed him right there. But see, there was a, there was a people that turned into bear like that, and that's what happened to them. That's why they wouldn't allow you to walk in the mountains. Nowadays, you can go any place, you know. Those people are gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all gone like that. And they used to go from Martinez up to Santa Rosa, that old village. Mm -hmm. The guy used to be that, uh, they said you can tell them to take the master to over there. Somebody died over here. Go over there and tell them people if they come down, they come down, we're waiting for them. That man walk over there, get there, afternoon sometimes, and they tell them, well, you got eat, you eat something before you go back. And they said, you're getting late. How are we going to get back? No, well, I'll get back there before dark. See, he knows what he's going to turn into himself. Oh. That, that's, that's the way they walk. They walk fast and they get home, you know. See, you get back quick. Yeah, he said, it's just a little ways. But see, they... they from up to Santa Rosa down to yeah. yeah. It's a long way from there. We, we used to go hunting. We walked over that Santa Rosa, Santa Rosa Mountain. It was a long ways. It's mm -hmm. about 10 miles yeah, from there up that way. That's a steep trail, too. Yeah. Yeah. And you're coming down this all right, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a funny way to do with them people, you know. And uh, nowadays, you can't see anybody doing that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah I talked to a lot, of, a lot of people yet. I go to Arizona or New Mexico. I run into old people and I ask him what, what the people they used to live with, them, how did they do it, if anybody was like that. And they're trying to tell me what to you know, they don't know. They're yeah. too young to remember yeah. a lot of things, you know. Yeah. Well, I said, I used to talk to old people. I never fooled around with the young ones. But the, all the boys I grew up with and they're all gone. Nobody mm -hmm. there now. Mm -hmm. You talked about visiting down where Fig Tree John used to live mm -hmm. as a boy. Yeah, no. They used to make it noise, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, you find them once in a while, but they, you can't see them around here. I've never seen one yet. Were up they up in the mountains? Yeah, up in the Moreau. i seen them over there, oh. but not here. Pika. A pika? Did you guys used to eat those guys? I don't know. No, I never said, but, but but they used to get that skin. They used to. What did they use it for? Oh, they. The other people use it, but which people do? Mm -hmm. They sew it, so good, and they blow it. They can make it sing, and sing, and they can dance, and that down they could soon get up and walk away. Oh, no kidding. So they uh, they made it into like a little bag. Yeah, it got like a little and bag. And they blew into it. Yeah. And it made noise. Yeah. No, no, they, when, nope. they, when, they, when they tie it up, they leave it somewhere, you know. And they used to, the last one, the guy, his name was Ignacio. There was a little short guy. Ignacio? Ignacio, yeah. And he used to tell us about it. We don't believe, you know. Watch it. He put that one over there. He started singing. Well, watch that one. And no, no touch, no nothing. Just sit there. He was going to start walking. How would they do that? When you got, when you were doing something like this, were you all had you been sitting around up singing for nights or? Well, uh, some of, some some people, you know, they just want to show you something. You know. oh, they, just do they don't they don't follow a lot of people. It's the secret way they do. It. They, they don't want the ladies to come in or older people because you know that for the kids. If you don't believe it, you know, you ask somebody else. Yeah, you can do that. There's nothing. Nothing you can, how you can, 
how we do it because they just they got a power in some way. Wait, wait, women weren't invited when they were doing powerful things. That no, right? they don't. Right. But uh, when they called them, then they go. But uh, this way, you know, they don't want anybody to know about it. I mean, he's doing for the kids. Is it mostly for the young boys? Yeah, just, yeah. To, just to remember what he did, right. you know. Sometimes you ask somebody like him, you know. tell you how, but he knows how to do it. He, he's not going to tell you, because I don't know why he might have my kid go with that. You don't know how to do that. You just know that. You know, that, that's why they don't like to tell anybody the old people. But they know it themselves. That's the way they're talking about how to do things. You know. Like you, you show me something, you know, how you do that? Well, you have to learn how to do things, you know. That's where it goes. If there was a boy who, who maybe was going to be a witch man, somebody said to them, I think that you, I want to keep, would, would a witch man take him and say, you know, he's going to be No, you know, like, uh, like, uh, you know, when their father, they can't give you that, his power, his own son. Mm -hmm. They have to be your uncle, He's the one supposed to give you something. Like that. Oh, I see. Father and son don't do that. No, but he can give it to somebody else, younger oh. one, you know, but he wouldn't give it to you. Know, so that, that's why uh, when they have this uh, ceremony, you know, for uh, the old people, the young people, you know, and they always, his power and his agreement about what he That's why they don't like to give it to your own people that they give you your own son. But you like your grandfather or something that he'll do it for you. And may you get power just like your father. But you can't your father can't go there. So it was usually in families though, huh? I mean, uh, if a father for example, your father was your grandfather a, uh, a rich man also yeah, like you? Yeah. So he would have been the one to pass it on to you. Yeah. When you're out, one of your uncles. Um, but my father would do that to me. Right. Okay. So that's why he didn't teach you that. And you felt like you didn't want to learn that anyway. Is that the same thing that time? And you decided not to do Well, it see, uh, there was too many people. Mm -hmm. There was my grandfather. He said, to, we don't want to make you too close to your father. Because your father was uh, more powerful was, uh, when he was young. He can climb this mountain like a nothing. See how the healthy people could believe that. And but they see it, but he was doing and they said, well, this is and there are a lot of people drive behind that you know, when they want to climb that they could make it. And they, he said, uh, some of these days you guys keep on trying to somebody going to help you guys to climb that mountain. It'd be easy for you. We talked about your mother being a a young bride that came over. Was there a girl's ceremony for becoming a young woman? Was there? Did, oh yeah, did you they, go they had, that? no. My mother didn't, but my grandmother my grandma did. did. Mm -hmm. But my mother didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had all that, you know, a long time ago for the all the ceremonies for the girls becoming women mm -hmm. and the boys becoming men. Yeah. And then they had their own eagle ceremony, and they had the. Uh, naming ceremony, they had all that, you know, and that was all destroyed when the Spaniards came in. Mm. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So, so, but your grandmother probably saw most of that. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, but your mom really didn't. No. By that time, it was pretty much gone. And of course, she was the last one that was baked to you, my grandmother. Oh, was she? Mm -hmm. Oh, describe that a little bit, because Look, and, uh, and when she was baked. Mm -hmm. Okay. When, what uh, did they do? When she had her period, you mm -hmm. know, they uh, make a hole in the ground like a, mm -hmm. what's it, where you're going to be buried or mm -hmm. something when you are buried. <laughs> and then they put the fire in there and then they heat the rocks and then mm -hmm. they put uh, some uh, herbs on top there. And then they put that mat and mm -hmm. then they lay the girl in there. 
and she's she's all covered up, you know. Yes. Does she have her the use of her arms and what from here up or waist up maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just from yeah. just from right here. Right here, uh -huh. okay, above her breast. Uh -huh. yeah. So she's covered all that. Time. And how long does she stay? At uh, three days. Three days. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And she's not allowed to do certain things. Yeah. Like uh -huh. so. And she's uh, all there. Everybody waits on her. All the other women, mm -hmm. you know. And oh. uh, mm -hmm. oh, so it was really special. Yes. When that oh, yes. To girl. Uh -huh. I think that you felt proud uh -huh. and, and yeah. very special. So all these women waiting around on you. Mm -hmm. oh. Especially the older ones, mm -hmm. you know, like your aunt and your grandma. And would they be teaching, instructing yes. her about yes. her duties as a young uh -huh. woman now? Yeah, mm -hmm. they tell them what to do, what they expected of them, mm -hmm. you know, what she's coming into, and all that to give her. Did, did they change, uh, did they get to wear their hair differently? Did they get any kind, do you know of any special outfit to wear, or was it just that they'd been through the ceremony, um, were they tattooed at that time maybe? I don't know. I think yeah. so, I think so, because that's for the marrying age, you know, going right. into marrying age, right. yes, for identification. And we talked about those tattoos because yes. we want our on our exhibit uh -huh. our lady to have her chin tattooed uh -huh. or something. I, I guess it could be. Was it just the chin or any part of the face? I don't know, but any part. But my grandmother just had your grandmother chin. had on the chin. What oh. was it? Three lines. The three or? lines. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Going down. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh. And that de that denoted her lineage. Yes. What was your grandmother's? So she. Okay, and that uh -huh. is that um, coyote or what? The coyote. Coyote. Uh -huh. And so your mother was. Um, what lineage was your mother then? Well, it goes on the father's side. See, that's the father, right. so well, we don't know what the father was. Oh, that's was. right. Oh, because uh -huh. he wasn't See? from Yeah. The, oh, okay. All right. But but your mother, was was she considered to be Wildcat then? No. No. She no. wasn't considered no. to be anything. So no. it didn't count in that way. Ah, uh -huh. okay. All so right. it's on the father's side, they get all those, you know. Well, now, did Korea people ever marry with other, say, Luceno or... Uh, well, I guess they had the lineage system like that too, maybe. I'm just wondering what would happen to somebody. I don't, I don't know whether the Los did or not, but they, there was quite a few mm -hmm. marriages between the Los and uh, Kuiya, and uh, a few with the Chimuevi and Kuiya. I just wonder how and, they reckon uh, the, the lineage, there, decide what, um, not in the Moeri it was then. I really don't know yeah. because uh, the Serrano, mm -hmm. a lot of the, the Serranos married into the Kuiyas here in the mm -hmm. past, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, well, a lot of them have the same way, um, don't I they? Think, I think so. Well, That's what Rana does, well, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I'm not real sure. Okay, so your grandmother was, uh, her father then was um, Coyote, right? Your mm, grandmother's father? My paternal? Father? Yeah. Wait. <laughs> We're talking about the grandma that lived with you. Oh, her, let's see, her father was Coyote, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Trying to see how uh -huh. Okay, but actually, so about that time anyway, things had sort of broken yes, down. Yes. So maybe that wasn't followed. Do you see anyone following the moiety system today? Um, well, what kinds of foods then did your mother fix say day to day? Was it um, beans? Beans. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, at that time, was she still using uh, mesquite? Oh yes, no. we were still mm -hmm. using my feet and we were still using acorn and mush and things mm -hmm. like that, yes. Wait, what is, what is the acorn mush called in Korea? We wish. We wish, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> we wish, that sounds good. I remember one time we were coming home, we, when we were at school, we would come home in the evening and we would sing, there was a song they used to sing at school, uh, they said, we wish good night, uh -huh. we wish you good night. Uh -huh. And we'd sing that, my mother was saying, I wonder why they're singing about you. You know, she didn't know that that was in English, you know, we wish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she must have thought, that's right, these kids are kids. That was funny, we, when we told her it was in English, you know, that, that we told her what it meant to them. And here she thought we were singing about you. Yeah, about acorn, how much you love acorn much. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, that... Speaking of things that songs and things that children do, what, what kinds of games and toys do you remember from your childhood? Oh, my mother used to make all the toys for us because mm -hmm. we didn't. You know, we never had any candy. Mm -hmm. We didn't know nothing about candy. And uh, that uh, mesquite bars that she made, that was our only candy. The real but seeds. you have nice healthy teeth, and don't you? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we had, uh, she would make our toys mm -hmm. and get uh, that, uh, Pom poms and you know and, and tie them up some way and make them like a, a wheel mm -hmm. and she'd put those two sticks in time and would push those around you know oh no uh -huh. oh, yeah. and and all the different things she would make and she'd wrap 
and those things were kind of a little uh, uh, wooden thing. And I don't know how she would do that and wrap those things, and that thing would actually move. <laughs> uh huh. She just started, I mean, she made her own toys, whatever. Did yeah. you uh, have dolls? I, you know, I was see, I, raised, I was raised with brothers, oh. and and and, uh, and when my grandma saw that I was kind of a tomboy, like you know, she just didn't, she was so upset over it. She wanted me to become a, a nice lady, and she made dolls for me. Mm -hmm. She made oh beautiful rag dolls, and I used to get those dolls and throw them up in the tree and climb after them. You know, I didn't know how to sit and play with them like I was supposed to. But she was so upset over it, you know. Oh well. <laughs> Someone has a per particular personality. It's very hard to change it, isn't it? <laughs> oh, did you, as children, did you play that cat's cradle kind oh, of string yes. game? What, uh -huh. was, what was that called in Puya? Is there a name for it? Or is it just a name for each one of the things? That it's you just did? a name for each one of those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what was yeah. your, who did that in your family? My mother. She? My mother. She, she used to make, uh, and she'd tell a story. Mm -hmm. She'd make those string things and then she'd make two people there. Mm -hmm. He said, when these two people come together and if they stop, they're friends and they talk to each other. If not, they just pass each other. They're not talking, you know. And, th and those things would pass each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, I thought that was really amusing. Uh -huh. It was really nice. She used to just tell us all different things like that. And she taught, she taught you the songs of the creation and mm -hmm. um, other She used to sing those songs. Mm -hmm. huh, yes. Well, you do a lot when you have other no other distractions, don't you? You talk to each other a lot. And then, of course, she was a basket maker. She oh. made, made a lot of baskets and sold them. Oh, and she sold all of her baskets to, uh, I think, a few to McGregor oh. here in the canyon. And then uh, before that, she sold all of it to Dr. Stillman from Pasadena. She used to buy all of them. She was uh, a lady doctor. Have you ever had a chance to go and see them? I, I, that's what I, I wondered whatever became of them because Dr. Stillman passed away a long time ago, you know, and I said, I wonder where those baskets went to. Dr. Stillman? Uh huh. Oh, if I hear anything, maybe somebody, yeah. maybe they were donated to Southwest Museum. Could be. Hmm, uh -huh. We should look and see if we can find them. It would be nice just to at least get pictures of yeah. them. Yeah. Uh -huh. hmm. So, uh. And she lives in Pasadena, that Dr. Stillman? Uh huh. So uh, that's what she did, and I don't know when she ever got time to do all the. She did everything, you know, and we just played around. Mothers are busy people. <laughs> <laughs> it's always incredible to me too. Mm -hmm. So she did. She have a, a mono and matate and mortar and pestle still. Oh yes. Still oh time? yes. Uh -huh. yeah. She had her own. Uh, the one that she put uh, her, a basket up on top. You know. The oh, the, the, the hopper. Yeah. The basket she she did that herself. And then she put her pitch on that, you know. Did she use pine pitch? No, well, mesquite. Mesquite. Uh-huh. Ah. And uh, so she used that. Mm -hmm. And that is now at the UCLA. Oh, good. Uh -huh. Well, so you donated that to the museum. Mm -hmm. Good. It will be well cared for and appreciated mm -hmm. by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. oh, that's nice. Yeah. You know, I look at those mortars and pestles and I think, in the world, I try to do it. It's heavy. Uh -huh. is oh yeah, I know. My, my mother used to work on the acorn. She'd sit oh, there, you know, pound that. And uh, I, if she'd get up to do something, I'd you get in there, oh. and I, I could never. I always miss that, you know. She <laughs> says, "You're going to ruin my basket side, you know, oh. if you hit the sides." But she'd do that, and then she, she'd uh, op uh, with that little whisk broom mm -hmm. she had. She'd take that all off and put it in the flat, uh, the winnowing mm -hmm. basket. And she would go like that, you know, real fast. She'd hit it, and then all that fine stays there, and that rough goes off, you oh, know. Right? And yeah. then she'd take that and pound it and finish that off too. But all that real fine stays so there. So she sprinkles it. It's in there. Uh -huh. It's in there in a big pile, and then she flicks the basket. No, she, she just goes like that. And she hits that side, and then uh -huh. you can see the the, the, the first one jump down. out. Uh -huh. yeah. And I tried to do the whole thing. <laughs> <game. laughs> oh, years of practice. Yeah. yeah. Most of all the old Indian women did that, you oh, know, okay. when they went over with their. Sure. Mm -hmm. it's, it's nice to and see she used to she prepare the chia. We ate a lot of chia mm -hmm. too. Yeah, I didn't understand about chia, but we've been talking about it a lot mm -hmm. in these meetings. It sure is an interesting food. It, it did. It has a particular flavor that you add it to other. Oh yes, foods it's it really. Good. But before uh, the wheat came into being, you know, mm -hmm. they did that 
by itself and it was fine. Mm -hmm. And then when the wheat came in, my mother used to mix that together, half half she had half wheat and oh was it was good? delicious. Mm -hmm. Was that maybe one of the, can you remember a favorite food? Was that that she prepared a dish that she prepared that you really liked? I think that was one of mine, uh huh. Did she do a lot of stews? Or oh yes, uh -huh. oh and you my, used my mother and my father, they used to hunt mm -hmm. with rabbits, for rabbits and deer and mm -hmm. big horn. How often so, would you say they get a big animal like a deer? Or well a big maybe horn? every two months or something like that. Oh, really? Because uh -huh. oh. that uh, lasts so long because yeah. they would make it into dry meat like, you know, she, I remember. Hmm. So. Uh, by the time you married and went away, had, did your parents ever have electricity or um, icebox or whatever? No, my my uh, my older brother, before he died, he died when he was only 29 years mm -hmm. old. But when, before that, he made a, a, a icebox, you might say, but it, mm -hmm. it had the gunny sacks made out of square and put water dripping right. on it that was wet all day yeah. long. Yeah, a lot and of people the, the breeze that. came and then the, that's the way they kept things like that. Yeah, it was called wow. a desert cooler and something that I read that people kept mm -hmm. their houses mm -hmm. or... And the, the same joint. thing yeah. with the, the old, old man Chino had uh, one of those great big giant ollas mm -hmm. and he had uh, uh, a net like there hanging yeah. there mm -hmm. and the water was, it was always filled and that was always cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea, yeah. Um, and I pretty much, I, I will, I'll ask you this and see if we've missed anything. Can you think of, tell me I if think you, you could see something in the That's why, I think if I tell somebody's story like that, no one believe me. But uh, I told Catherine about it. Catherine, she was just like me. She liked to know everything. I heard a lot of things like that, too. And, uh, he used to have over here this story. Yeah, he used to have a big house. That was not uh, really the great with the wood and everything. There was nothing but the palm palms and all that great. You know? And we used to go to sleep there. And they told us not to sleep there because they, they put the dead people in the same old night. You know? One time I was laying down there, I was covered. It was a supper time, huh? I had a sheet of everything like that. And we talk. Well, first we play cards. Get tired and sleep. And I look. I got. I look like I got up and looking at someone who's standing with all that conversation. He was looking. This. 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 Uh, the, the old lady was laying over here, and we lay this side. Three of us. And I was in the middle. And I looked at them standing. Looked at this old lady first, and she turned around this way, and I hollered. And I got scared. Mm -hmm. And this boy stayed jumping. But then I see somebody who's so over standing with quite close. And uh, we lived just across from that little ways. And I said, I want to open it while you do I otherwise he's not scared. And they said, no, might something happen. I said, no. But I used to walk in the nighttime. I never get scared. Of this all or nothing but brush that guy. It was just a trail, you know. Well, I said, to you, it's the first time you that scared. But you weren't, they, they told you not to sleep in the big no, house. No, yeah. but that's what happened. Uh -huh. But they, they, don't, they don't see nothing. I'm the one to see it. <laughs> I do worry too. Yeah. But I got mad and I walked away from them. I got up and come home. I never even scared. This place that was out this way, you say? Yeah. Um, over, what, down by the Kingdom one and one now? What's that? The big house that you're talking about. No, right here. It was right in this yeah, building? Yeah, right here, yeah. Oh, and that you lived over that way then? Yeah, that's another yeah, the okay. case. They had, about to, they had one over here, and then what happened, they had one just up on the little ways of Belvedere. Right on this property down here? Yeah, they had one over here. There was about four of them over here. They yeah. all, uh, there was a one of them. going to be there for a long, long yeah. time if people don't mess with it. That's right. I like it to be that way. Mm -hmm. Sure tells an interesting story. It makes you think about what it, how things change. Yeah.